Amen. Praise God. All right. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we, we thank you, God, for this opportunity again tonight, Lord, just to come and seek your face. Lord, to, to worship you, God. And Lord, we just pray tonight, just as we see what's going on on the outside with the rain just pouring down. Father, we pray and hear tonight, Lord. We pray for your Holy Spirit to pour down, your anointing to pour down on our hearts and our lives, God. Lord, we pray for a breaking, God, Lord, in our hearts, a breaking in our lives, God. Lord, that you would rule and reign within us, Lord. God, just pour out your spirit tonight. Pour it out, Lord God, we pray. Hallelujah. God, you just have your way in us. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Praise God. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. Let's just, let's just worship. Praise God.
nothing compares to this what a beautiful name it is the name of jesus we didn't want heaven without us so jesus
come before you tonight, Lord, and we thank you for this evening and everybody that has come out, Lord, and um, you know, Lord, as we take this time to sing these songs to you, and, they, and we sing them to you, <coughs> we don't sing to hear ourselves, Lord, or we shouldn't. Our hearts sing to you and our voices sing to you as an expression of our faith and our love and our devotion to you when we sing these words like this last song that we sang Jesus Messiah and really that's it we recognize you as the Messiah the deliverer the one that came to take the sins of the world to bring forgiveness to all of us Lord so that we could have eternal life through you there's no greater gift that you could have ever given us that redemptive plan, Lord, that we can be with you forever through your Son. And so, Lord, sometimes maybe we take it lightly, we take it for granted, Lord, and in many different ways, sometimes we get so caught up in the things of this world and so busy with so much stuff, and before we know it, it's been so long maybe that we've spent time with you and alone time with you or time reading your word or maybe just being still. Maybe sometimes just, maybe we need to be the ones that aren't doing the talking. We need to be listening to what you have to say to us. And so it's times like this, Lord, that we're so thankful and we're so grateful because there's a lot of places in the world right now that this can't happen. And in fact, if this happens, it might happen for a moment and we're on the run for our lives. And so, Lord, we, we lift all of those up to you tonight, Lord, that don't have the same opportunities and the same freedoms and the same chances and to, to come before you and to worship you openly with, with the freedom that we have here, Lord. We're living in very, very challenging times right now. In fact, there may be some in here that kind of Maybe you feel that we're probably seeing a, 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 a hint of Bible prophecy unfolding before our eyes right now in the world. And we are living in challenging times. Every time we turn on the news, Lord, there's more bad than good. There's more negativity than optimism. But Lord, even through all of that, it doesn't matter what the world wants to throw at us. It doesn't matter what the enemy wants to do. You are the one with the, with the ultimate supreme power. Nothing happens without you knowing about it. Nothing happens without you allowing it. And it fits into your eternal plan somehow, some way. And we may not be able to fully understand it, but we know that you do. And our faith doesn't waver on that. We don't have all the answers. If we had all the answers, Lord, we wouldn't need you. But that'll never happen. 
You give us what we need when we need it at the perfect time. And we operate on your timetable. And we need to get off of our timetable. We need to get our eyes focused off of the things of this world and focus on the things that are above, the things that are eternal, the things where moth and rust don't corrupt. The spiritual things, Lord. We don't want to be ushering in the prophetic word where, where it says that in the, in the last days, people are running to and fro in the earth, Lord, and, and we're just going back and forth and trying to find this and fix that and see what we need to do over here and trying to fulfill things in our lives or things in our hearts that we cannot fulfill. Only you can. And so those of us that are in here tonight, myself included, all of us, Lord, we come before you and ask, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, for not being as serious with you as we need to be. And Lord, fill us with that desire to do so. For we don't need the things of this world, the opportunities of this world. Lord, we want everything to come from you. Even, even in, your, in your words, it says, Lord, Paul said, even I want you to, Jesus, take my very thoughts captive. Everything that we think, everything that we do needs to be centered around Christ Jesus. And we're going to miss it sometimes. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to fall. But, Lord, you're right there to help us get back up. And because we have that desire to follow you, we're not going to fall that far. You'll bring us back into, into line, into that path with you, Lord. And it's that narrow path. It's not that wide path. It's a narrow path that we have to choose to follow. And so all of us in here tonight, as we agree, we will all have a heart that says to you, Lord, this day we choose you. As for me and my house, as for me, I choose to serve you. And let that happen in every one of us here tonight. We thank you again, Lord, for this time, this precious time you've given us. For the worship team, for those that have come here tonight or, or watching online, thank you, Lord, for this time. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Praise all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. All the time he is good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. As the youth are, are heading out, uh, everyone who's sitting so far back, come on a little bit closer. Make it easier for, uh, for Pastor, uh, um, oh my word. Pastor Nathan, my mind is tired today. Make it easier for Pastor Nathan to just look right here instead of way out there. Amen. Everyone come on, come up a little bit closer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I'm, I'm so thrilled that we're here together worshiping with the youth. Um. My dad, who's a pastor, he's, he's retired now, but he said for so many years that when you have a youth group that's on fire, it affects and infects the rest of the congregation. They begin to want to be just as passionate about seeking the Lord and, and following after him. And so we, we praise God for uh, a passionate youth group, a youth group that's on fire seeking the Lord. Amen? Amen. Come on up here, Brother Domi. Praise the Lord. Now, there's plenty of, plenty of seats all the way up through here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, praise God. Are you ready, brother? All right, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. Okay. You guys ready for another one? Don't let this one scare you. I have, I have seven pages of notes here, but I, I pasted all my scriptures into my notes. So most of it I'm going to be reading out of the scripture. So it'll get through pretty quickly. But don't let that scare you. Uh, but this time we are going to be studying another type. This type is the type of Joshua. Now, um, this is one of the ones that I 
I had known before that it was a type of Christ, that he was a type of Christ, but I really wasn't sure how. You know, like you could see a couple of things, but as I got studying on it, there's actually, uh, the type is actually held in two different Joshua's. I wasn't aware of that. Uh, the first one is Joshua, the son of Nun. We know him. He is the assistant to Moses during Moses' lifetime, and then he became um, the, uh, the leader of the Hebrews after Moses died, and he is a type of Christ. But then there was another Joshua, and he was, he was the first high priest to come on the scene after they returned from the Babylonian captivity. When they were rebuilding the temple and re, reinstituting the priesthood, he was the guy that stepped up, and his name was Joshua, and he is actually another type of Christ. So there's two Joshuas that are the types of Christ. I'm going to be doing both of them together because they kind of they work right into each other. Maybe God planned that. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure he did. Uh, but th it's one of those things that uh, we, looking at it, at, at first it's like, you know, how, this is one of the ones like, how do we know this is a type of Christ? It, couldn't this just be a person who they, they lived a life and now, you know, we're like, oh, you know, we see comparisons to Christ. Because all of us as Christians, as followers of Christ, we should have things that in our lives that people are like, okay, you know, that shows me Christ. That, that uh, models Christ before me. Uh, and so on this one, the, the first one I, I noticed, and the first one that all the commentators I read came up with was, is because of the name. Um, I never knew this until like my early 20s, but the name Joshua is actually the, the Old Testament version of the name Jesus. Or you could say Jesus is the New Testament version of the name Joshua. They both come from the, the, the name Yeshua. So actually, you know, when they, they said it's interchangeable in the scriptures in the New Testament, when you're reading through, you could just as easily say, you know, Joshua, you know, did all these miracles or Joshua, the son of God, because it's the same. It comes from the same name, Yeshua. It was both of them. And I thought this was really cool. It, the name means Jehovah saves or God saves. And it's like, isn't that a perfect name for the one who is coming to save us? You know, when uh, when God told Mary, hey, name your son this. He could have picked from a lot of names. There are a lot of names in this world. I mean, probably every one of us in here has a different name, and I'm sure that the Hebrews had a whole bunch of different names too. There's a lot of names, but he chose this one. God saves, because this was his promise. This was his plan. This was the beginning. And uh, we can see that kind of carried out in the lives of the Joshuas. It's how God saves us and what God kind of, how he does the whole process. And so... And we, we see that when God sent his son and he named him Jesus, or he named him Yeshua, Joshua, he was signaling his purpose and his plan. He was coming to save us all. And so we, we get back in, get down into the comparisons. Um, one of the things I thought was really cool also, it, it says um, Joshua, he came and he, he, was, he was a nobody before, before he became the, the leader of Israel. He was just... Uh, he was the servant of Moses. And in the Bible, it calls Moses a servant of the Most High. So Joshua, he was a servant of a servant. You know, he, he, just, he was the assistant. He did the grunt work. He did the leg work. He did, you know, whatever Moses wanted him to do. He did it. And we see that perfectly aligning with who Christ came to be. When Christ came down, it said he, he made himself of no, you know, he didn't take on any big role. He made himself a servant. And we see Joshua did that same thing as showing a type of Christ, that Christ would come and make himself a servant. And like they said, you can't lead until you have been a servant. And so Christ, you know, he made himself a servant while on this earth. He, he submitted his will to the Father, just like Joshua. He submitted his will to Moses. And when the time came, you know, Joshua was lifted up and he was placed at the head of all the tribes of Israel. And he said, okay, God said, now you are going to lead my people. And just the same way, when Jesus, when he, when he finally, he, he died his death, when he rose again from the dead, God finally said, okay, now you will be, you will, your name will be above every other name. Your throne will be up above all the earth. And God, he raised him up. But it's because they were a servant first. And so Joshua, one of his first things he showed us about Christ was Christ will come as a servant, the servanthood of Christ. And Christ fulfilled that when he came. Okay, and the next one, kind of moving on, uh, let's see, uh, Joshua. He was, he, was a, he, was a, he was a leader of the, of the Israelites, just like I just said, but he led them in to the promised land. And we see that um, in Joshua, I'm not going to read the whole script, whole, whole, uh, 
basically the chapters of, of Joshua 1 through 24 tells the story of Joshua leading the people into the promised land. And this is a direct comparison of how Jesus, because of who he is, he is now leading us into the promised land. When we came to Christ, when we, when we were saved, he now has led us into all the promises that God has for us. And we are walking into that. And that, that it was made possible because he led us in, just like Joshua led the people into the promised land. Okay, and the, the scripture uh, I have that kind of supports this is in Hebrews 4, 6 through 11. It says, Since therefore it remains for some to enter, to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience, Again, he appoints a certain day today, saying through David so long afterward in the words already quoted, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whosoever entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. So we see even though Joshua led them into the land of promise, they still had trouble. They, they were led in. They were all happy about it. This was the land promise. They came in, but still they failed. We see how Israel, you know, they're up and down, up and down, up and down. God finally had to bring judgment on them because of their disobedience to him. They were just constantly <laughs> in disobedience. They would, they would come, have a revival once, and go away, come and have a revival again, and go away, and just up and down. And even in our lives, we can see that sometimes, you know, Christ has led us into all of his promises. But now it comes to us. Are we going to continue to walk in faith? Because that's all they're required. You know, they, they showed up, you know, so many of these battles. He gave the promise to Joshua. He said, you know, Joshua, when you go into this land, no one will be able to stand against you. They're not going to do it. All the days of your life, there will not be an enemy that you face that will stand against you. And that promise is still ours. That promise is ours as well. But it's if we walk in faith. You know, Joshua, he couldn't just walk into the land. He had to, he had to arm up and go to battle. But God said, every battle you go into, I will fight for you and you will win. And that was his promise. And we see through the book, uh, book of Joshua, every battle he went into, they won because God was going before them. They walked in faith. They weren't just like, okay, we're just going to sit here, you know, and you know, not, not do a thing and let God bring his promises to me. No, God said, you know, no, go out, do it, conquer, take it all, and I will be with you. Just in our lives, you know, so many times we're like, okay, oh, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm, I'm a Christian now. I'm just going gonna, gonna to sit here. I, I'm just going to be a Christian. I'm going to come to church when it's open, and, you know, my life, you know, other than that, it's just going to, I'm just going to let it unfold how it unfolds. No, God says, you know, he, he's saying, no, go do something. And try, test God, <laughs> test him, do big things, go out and, and, and do things, you know, and, and try bigger things for his kingdom. Try to advance his kingdom, go out and, and follow everywhere he leads because he will go before you. But we got to walk in faith. We can't get set back in that disobedience and say, okay, God, you gave me this land, but I'm not going to claim any of the promises. I'm not going to, you know, take any of that. You know, they, it was before them, all the orchards, all the vineyards, all the grazing lands, but it would have done them no good unless they actually made use of it. And now God is calling us to go into his word and find the promises and make use of them, live by them, walk in them, take advantage of them, because God said, hey, I can do these things for you, but you've got to walk. You've got to put feet on your faith and just start walking to the promises of God, realizing that he will never take you into a battle that he cannot win for you. But it all comes to us just trusting on him, relying on him. But so many times, like in 2 Timothy 3, 5, it says, you know, these, these having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. You know, so many times, I know I get stuck there as a Christian. Sometimes, you know, I believe this, but then I, I hesitate. I hold back and it's like, oh, it's, that, 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 that sounds really hard. I can't do that. It's like, well, God never asked me to do it. He said, just advance and he will do it. That is the power of his, the faith he has put in. That is the power of what he wants to do. But we have to walk in that faith. He can't deny its power by sitting and doing nothing and being disobedient. 
to him. And just like, just like in Hebrews 3, 15, later on it says, And as it said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. So today, just like they were told back then, don't, don't let it sit. Don't harden your heart. Don't just sit down and say, no, I can't do that. But get up and follow his voice, and he will do it for you. Okay, I kind of got into the second one. But the second one, it was um, a comparison is Joshua was a mighty warrior. And it goes uh, from Joshua 1, 5. It says, And no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. And this is cool because, you know, this is later on in the New Testament. This is exact words of Christ. Christ may have been quoting this. I will not leave you or forsake you. You know, echoing this promise from so long ago uh, that, that God had given. But we see even in, um, in Isaiah's prophecies, this is, I thought this was kind of cool when I came across this. In Isaiah's prophecies, he prophesied that the son of the virgin would be called mighty warrior. You know how when he says, you know, prince of peace, mighty God, he, he called him a, a, when he said mighty God, the Hebrew word for that is El Gabor. And it means that the words can literally mean, uh, what is it, God man, mighty man, of war or mighty warrior. I thought that was pretty cool because, you know, all these things could be said about Christ because he was called mighty God. And so this, you know, he could also be called that with that same name. It could also have the meaning of mighty man of war or mighty warrior, just as Christ is. You know, he didn't just, doesn't just passively go before us. Christ doesn't. No, he, he conquered. He conquered death, hell and the grave. He conquered all these things. He bought a righteousness for us. You know, he, his righteousness is now ours because he bought it. He fought for it. He did it. You know, in Colossians 2.15, we see uh, the Bible says, And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Christ did that. Just like Joshua went into the, the, the promised land and he fought battles and won them, Christ has done that. He has gone. It, you know, when he, when he, in the, those three days in the grave, he went to hell and he conquered it for us so that the fear and the sting of death would totally be taken from us. He did that. He is the mighty conqueror that none can stand before. In Revelations 19, 11 through 16, it says, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth was a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an, an iron scepter. He treads, with, he treads the winepress of fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has the name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so, yes, he, that sounds like a conqueror. You know, there will no enemy stand before him. And we, even now, we, that, that's us too. We are in Christ. And so the, the battles he has fought for us, we can walk in the victories of the battles he has won. Even now, there is nothing on this earth that can stand against us. No battle you're facing, no, no hindrance you're facing, no, no work of the enemy that you are facing that he has not already conquered. So we can walk forward. We can go forward and just, we can walk forward and act like it's not even there. You know, I know we will face struggles, we will face trials, but we face them knowing that Christ has already beat them. Christ has already won. He has already got the victory and won it all for us. So we just have to walk forward, keep, keep our eyes on him and walk forward because he has already won the victory. Okay, so that was, that was what is, well, it wasn't everything there was on the first Joshua, but now I'm going to go on to the, the second Joshua. This is the high priest. You know, after the, after the Israelites had been, um, had been in Babylonian captivity for the 70 years, as they returned, there was a resurgence of, of you know, they wanted to rebuild the temple, and we see that in um, Ezra and Nehemiah, uh, and this high priest, he's, he's referenced in Zechariah, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Haggai. 
but we, we see the story of the rebuilding in the time of Ezra and Nehemiah. And we see his name also was um, Yeshua <coughs> or Joshua. And there in Zechariah, he gives a he had this vision of uh, Joshua. And I'm going to read that part for you. It's out of Zechariah chapter three, verses one through eight. And this is where we get the typology of him. Uh, and the connection between him and Christ. <clears throat> so Zechariah, Zechariah 3, 1 through 8. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right side to accuse him. The Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is not this man a burning stick snatched from the fire? Now Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes as he stood before the angel. The angel said to those who were standing before him, Take off his filthy clothes. And he said to Joshua, See, I have taken away your sin, and I will put fine garments on you. And then I said, Put a clean turban on his said, head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him, while the angel of the Lord stood by. The angel of the Lord gave this charge to Joshua. This is what the Lord Almighty says. If you will walk in obedience to me and keep my requirements, then you will govern my house and have charge of my courts. I will give you a place among these standing here. In verse 8, listen, high priest Joshua, you and your associates seated before you who are men symbolic of things to come. I am going to bring my servant, the branch. So right there, that gives us a clue right there in verse 8. You and the men who are with you are symbolic of things to come. And that next part, I'm going to bring my servant, the branch. And immediately when I read that, my mind went to, you know, Christ is the vine. We are the branches. You know, that this symbology. But it goes deeper than that. Uh, in Zechariah 6, 11 through 12, it says, Behold, a man whose name is Branch, for he will branch out from where he is, and he will build the temple of the Lord. Well, I didn't know this. But the town Nazareth, you know, Christ, he was called the man from Nazareth, you know, or the, the Nazarene. That was one of his, his, uh, I guess they called monikers, you know, he was raised in Nazareth, which the city's name actually means city of the branch. <laughs> so the term branch refers to a shoot, a blossom, figuratively as a descendant, you know, he was a descendant of, of, of David. And so he can actually be called, you know, the man of branch, the man, you know, because that's what it, what it means. I, I thought that was pretty cool, you know, so we, we get like a direct translation of that, you know, his name was called branch, and then he was from Nazareth, so he could be called, because they did that back then, he was like, he was the man of Nazareth, he is the man of branch, that's who he was. I thought that was really cool, so it makes a clear connection between that and Christ, he fulfilled that prophecy right there. And so, and also, you know, then, then going back, you know, the prophecy tells us, or the Bible gives us a clear picture of like, hey, you know, Joshua the high priest, he is a type of one to come. And so looking into that, we look back at, you know, this, this, just this little story right here in Zechariah 3, 1 through 8, and what can it teach us of Christ? If, uh, if, if he is supposed to be a type of Christ, what can we learn uh, from this, just this little passage? And there's four things that I want to bring out that we can take from uh, this uh, this typology of Joshua, the second Joshua, the high priest. Now the first one, we see the picture of a Satan standing at his right side, and he is he's accusing him. And of course we know that Satan, he is the accuser of the brethren. We see that in Revelation 12.10. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power of the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come, for the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. And so we see, you know, it, Jesus, you know, he, he was, Satan was accusing him. And Satan tried, you know, in, in the temptations to get Christ to fall and get Christ to fall. And even then, you know, he couldn't get Christ to fall. He still accuses him. But this scene shows us that, it, that when, um, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me go back to my notes. Okay, yeah, and so this, this, uh, this kind of shows us, this harkens back to the time when Christ, you know, standing before Pilate, and he was standing before the judges of men, before his crucifixion, and what they were, they were all accusing him of all these things. But it said, you know, they couldn't find any faults with him. Even the Sanhedrin who had, had judged him, 
they couldn't find any fault with him. They actually had to bring in people to come and lie against him because there was nothing that they could they could do against him. Everything he did and everything he said was, was it was it was true. It was good. They couldn't find any fault, and they're the ones who had to go around the laws to <laughs> to uh, to accuse him. So he was accused falsely. But you know, we see in the the second part that we can see uh, the second um, connection between Christ and Joshua. This Joshua says. Uh, Joshua is clothed with filthy garments and standing before the angels. Now, we see this. This is pretty cool because, you know, this, the, these filthy clothes, they weren't his or they weren't Christ's. Because we, we see uh, in, um, in 2 Corinthians 5.21, He who knew no sin became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And again in Isaiah, the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. So we see he, this, this Joshua, he's standing before God. He's a picture of Christ to come and Christ standing before God because we, we, he did on the cross. He stood before God in judgment and he took on all of our sin. He took on all of our filthy robe. He took on all of our iniquity and all of our unrighteousness. He bore it for us before the throne of God. And it said even, even on the, uh, the crucifixion, God turned his eyes from Christ and Christ bore our sins. Christ was judged for our sins. So we see this is just a perfect uh, picture of Christ, Him standing there before the Father, wearing all of our filthy rags. But the cool thing is, He was the only one who could take them off. He was the only one who, who, could, who could rid Himself of them because they were not His. He took on our sins. He was perfect. Satan tried to accuse Him, but there was nothing to stop. But he did take, our, uh, take on our sins in judgment. But then we see the third thing we see. The angel ordered those who are standing before Jesus to, are standing before, yeah, I guess those are interchangeable, standing before Joshua, remove the filthy garments from him. And again he said, uh, See, I have taken your iniquity away from you and will clothe you with festal robes, or the good robes. And we see this is, you know, Christ, when he, when he finally stood before God, you know, he was the only one who was pure. So God was able to remove all those sins, everything from him, and take them away and replace him in the, those perfect robes of white, which we see, you know, everywhere else. You know, after this, everywhere you see, you know, we, you see these images of white robes and Christ in the white robes. In his transfiguration, they said his robe became so white that they were blinded by it. Because he was, it was a robe of purity, a robe of, 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 of perfection that he was able to take off. And he alone could do that through God because he was the righteous king. He had no sin of his own. And leading into the fourth thing, um, it says, Gabriel, the angel of the Lord, admonished Joshua, saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, if you walk, if you will walk in my ways, and if you will perform my service, then you will also govern my house and also have charge of my courts, and I will grant you free access among those who are standing here, among these who are standing here, you know, meaning the court of God, God, you know, the heavenly court of God. Now we see, you know, this was something given to Joshua, but there was no way Joshua could completely fulfill all this. I mean, to, to walk always in the ways of God and to perform all of his services you know, he, he was talking about perfection, just walking perfectly before the Lord. You know, so it breaks down here. He, he gave this command to Joshua, but Joshua could not fulfill, fulfill it because he wasn't a perfect. He wasn't the Christ to come. Even like, you know, it said, you know, Joshua, the first Joshua, uh, the verse we were, um, I think is the one we started out with in Hebrews. It said, if Joshua would have uh, given you this rest, you would have, you, there would have not been one to come. But God had given Joshua something to do, take the land. But Joshua, he did it, he went in, he did all he could do, but he fell short. And this second Joshua, the high priest, he was given this command and he did all he, he could do, but he fell short. But in this, we see the perfection of Christ. What they could not do, he has done for us and he has done completely and perfectly and now you know all authority and all power has been given to him you know we, we we see here you know if if joshua would have been able to do that god would have given him what it would say the governance of his house and also charge of his courts 
that would have been his, but he couldn't do that. But Christ did do that, and now everything is given. It says the kingdom is turned over to him. The kingdom is given to him, and and he is he is victorious because he did fulfill this. He was able to walk in the ways of God and perform his service. Christ did that, and he just didn't just do it, but he did that to fulfill his name. God save us. He did it for us to save us, to, to lead us out, to lead us into all that God had for us, to make a place for us in the judgment room of God where we are now in Christ. So, And what is in, what is in Christ is those righteous robes. That is something that we have in Christ. Now we stand before God, not as these sinners wearing these dirty rags, but we stand wearing the righteous robes of Christ. And now when God looks on us, he sees the righteousness of Christ because Christ bought that for us. Christ did that for us. You know, and now you, you, nobody else could have done it, but Christ did it. And we see where's, uh, okay, in Hebrews 4, 14 through 16, we see, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we possess, for we do not have, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. This is what Christ bought for us. This is what he bought for us. You know, he fulfilled what the first Joshua could not. He fulfilled what the second Joshua could not. And he made a way for us so we can approach the throne of grace, the throne of mercy with, with confidence. You know, it's not just saying, okay, God, you know, I, oh, I wish you could do this for me. Or, you know, I know I'm, 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 not, I'm not able, but could you do this? It's not a begging stance, but it's walking in, not in our own confidence. We don't have anything we've done, but we walk in saying, God, I come before you because of what Christ did. You know, it's excitement. It's a joy. You know, Christ did this, and now I am here in your presence and I, I can come here. We can stand up straight before God. And we can make our petitions known to him because of what Christ did. He bought that for us and we can take advantage of it. And that's one part of our faith, not walking before the throne of God or coming to him in prayer and being like, oh, and feeling this, this shame or feeling this worry that we're not enough for God. We can stand up and say, hey, I didn't do it, but Christ did for me. So I'm going to stand here before you because I can. I come through the grace of Christ. I come through the blood of Christ. This is what he bought for me. And we can enter into the presence of God. That's what he has bought for us. That's what God, uh, Christ has bought for us. He has conquered the land and conquered, made available the promises to us. And just like I, I said this before, but going back to this, we, the promise of Joshua is our promise today. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you and I will not leave you or forsake you. That's ours. There's no battle that has not already been won. No victory that is not already ours through Christ. He already did it. He already passed through to the other side. The, the war is won. We have to pass through a few battles, but hey, they are what they are. Let's pass through them with, with faith and joy and walk straight ahead knowing that Christ has already won the victory. And we, and two, when, when we fight against people, you know, when we come against people, you know, this isn't, you know, this isn't something no man shall stand before you. It's not, so, you know, to, so you can win arguments or, or get victory over people or, you know, you know, stuff like that or win an argument. Uh, but it says, it's, we have to remember Ephesians six twelve. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against authority and against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. You know, we, we have to realize that this battle, this, this battle we're, we're in, it's not against the people around us. It's not against the, the most sinful person you know. It's not against them. 
It's against the people who are deceiving them. It are not the people who are deceiving them, the, the spirits that are deceiving them, these, these powers in high places. That's where we're focusing on. We can't get so focused on people who hurt us or disagree with us or have offended us that we start, well, you know, no man can stand against me. I'm against them. I'm good. They're going to lose. It may not look like them falling down, but we have to go. We have to just say, hey, I'm going to get past them. I'm going to fight against the power that's behind them. I'm going to fight against the deceiver who has deceived them until they, they're living such wicked lives and still they're making such wicked decisions. We have to look past them to the victory that God has already won. And it is against those powers of darkness. And we see just as Joshua, the high priest, he prefigured, oh wait, you know, wait, sorry, I got ahead of myself. Just as Joshua, the son of Nun, he prefigured the way that Christ would conquer our enemies and lead us into the rest in heavenly promised land. We see the, the Joshua, the high priest, he prefigured how, how Jesus, as our high priest, would take upon himself all our filthy iniquities and exchange them for his own right. Un, for his own righteousness, so that we might be able to approach God's throne of his grace in his heavenly courts with confidence in order to receive mercy and find grace to help us. He is the branch who will build the temple of God. Who is the temple of God? You know, we talked about this in all of our types. We are the temple of God. He is bringing us together to be that temple of, of God. And we who follow him with pure and sincere devotions are that temple remember by faith we are in christ it's nothing that we do it's nothing we can attain but it is through faith and so just like the filthy robes were exchanged for perfect one god has exchanged our filthy robes for those perfect ones bought by christ now we stand cleansed in the sight of god we stand in the righteousness of christ and so what i want to leave you tonight what what this what I want to, to, to leave you with about Christ that we can take hold of is the work he has already done for us. You know, that work the first Joshua did in conquering the land and the promises, that's ours. The promises are ours. You look through the Bible and everything he says that, that he wants to give us or will give us, that is ours through faith. We can take hold on that. We can walk for that. We can believe it and trust it and just live our lives like it's true and just like also just like he has walked he has walked into the throne room of god and he has taken on our our sin he has taken on our judgment and he has ridded himself of it he has he has pushed him off and thrown them away and they are known no longer they are no longer his and we by faith are in him his purity his righteousness his holiness is ours we don't have to live in shame and doubt and condemnation anymore. We stand in his righteousness. And so many times in my life, I'm like, I'm, I'm hesitant to, to, to really believe that because, you know, in my life, there, there's so much, there's so much that I've done, so many sins, so many things that I can be ashamed of. And so many times when I come, I try to come before God in prayer, there, that, that shame tries to take hold of me. That, that, that hurt from the past tries to take hold of me. That, that, you know, the accusations from Satan, they try to, it's not so much, you know, he knows all this is covered, but he tries to bring it up because he knows he's not trying to get God to believe it. He's trying to get us to believe it. He's trying to get us to back up and, and take back on those, those filthy rags. But we, we, we don't have to do that anymore. We have to stand before God and say, no, no, <laughs> be silenced, the accuser. Christ has paid for my, my, my new robes, and I'm wearing new robes, and I stand in his righteousness. He did the work. I didn't do it. I had sins, but he took those up. He took those on. Those, those sins that I had committed were on those robes that he's already taken off, and he's already cleansed of them. Now I stand in his righteousness that he has bought. And we have to really believe it. When we go to God, don't go to God with, with, with that shame holding on to you. Yes, you can go in humility knowing that, you know, it was Christ who paid for your, for your righteousness. But you go in confidence knowing that because he paid, for your, before he paid for your righteousness, you can stand before God and you can talk to him. You can make your requests known to him. You can, you can just stand there and worship and be in the presence of God because what Christ has done. 
So I want to encourage you when shame tries to tries to make its way back in, when, when the, the accuser says, no, you've done this in your past. You've messed up your life. You did this. Yeah, we will still see there will be effects. There, there are, you know, you know, things that you're dealing with the consequences of how you have lived your life. But that's only in the physical world. In the spiritual world, you you are cleansed. You are free. You stand before God in Christ's righteousness. You can take hold of that. So when the accuser tries to come against you, you don't have to listen to it. You just, you just step into the righteousness of Christ and say, I'm here by grace. I'm here in his righteousness. It's not mine. So it, it's perfect because it was bought by him. You, you step into that perfect righteousness and live in that perfect righteousness. Just abide in that righteousness of Christ and just let the accusations fade away. And let, let the shame fade away. Let the condemnation just fade away. And live every day. If you feel it creeping up on you, step into it. Step even more into it. Double down and just abide in His presence knowing that you can because Christ bought it for us. He, he, he covered all His bases. He, he dotted every I and crossed every T. He, he fulfilled all of the law. He fulfilled everything. And He bought that perfect righteousness for us but now in faith we have to step into it we have to live like it's true just like the the, the children of Israel they walked into the promised land but they didn't take hold of the promise now we are walking into the promised land but are you going to take hold of the promise take hold of the promise tonight and every day after this take hold of his promise take hold of his righteousness because he has bought it for you and just live in it abide in it and know that it is yours. This is a promise of God that he has provided for you. And that's really all I have tonight. So I will turn it back over to Pastor and, and kind of let you guys think on that for this week. So. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just kept, I kept coming back to that verse you, you, you read from there in Hebrews. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence. There is the part of, of approaching. We walk by faith. You, you have to approach God. And just like he was saying, we can beat ourselves up black and blue. I and mean, we can do that to ourselves so easily. And then we can say, how can I ever go to God again? And yet his word says, approach, walk in faith toward the throne with confidence that he has grace and mercy in my time of need, in your time of need. I can go to him. Even when I don't feel like I'm deserving, I can go to him. Because that's when I need it. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Such a good word tonight. Such a good word. Praise the Lord. Can we stand tonight and just go to the Lord in prayer? Hallelujah. I feel led that we need just to pray right now. I don't know where you're at, what you're struggling with, how your week has been, what the enemy has accused you of. Sometimes he accuses us because he knows he's right. We've done something wrong. But that's our time of need. And we can go to God in confidence and we can say, Lord, I'm in need. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we, God, we just surrender to you. God, we're in need. We're in need of your grace, of your mercy. God, we hunger for you, Lord. Take this from our heart, Lord. I don't know what's going on in everyone's lives, but Lord, I just pray you would you would give your grace and mercy, Lord, that we can approach you with confidence that you're not going to reject us, that you're not going to shame us away, that you're not going to say, get away from me. Lord, right now we can approach you with confidence, Lord. And God, I just pray right now, Lord, even for those who may be watching with us right now, Lord, God, just forgive us. Lord, forgive us of our sins. Lord, we come to you in confidence. We can trust you, God. We know you won't put us to shame. You don't reject us. 
Lord, I pray, God, as everyone is, is stepping in faith and confidence, God, approaching you, Lord, help us now to walk in it daily. God, to walk in the confidence that you have redeemed us. We are not who we used to be. We are different. We are blood-bought. We are brand new. Oh, Lord Jesus, we are new creations. The old is gone. Oh, God, we just rejoice in that right now, God. We are new creations, Lord. Lord, you have forgiven. You have, you have shed grace upon us, Lord, in our time of need. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. There was a couple of prayer requests that came in yesterday. This is from Chandis. She's going in for a job interview tomorrow. We want to lift Chandis up in prayer. Hallelujah. We have a praise report from, um, 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 praise God, Ate, um, Ate Glow. The sister-in-law and the children are starting to recover from COVID. Uh, praise the Lord. Continue to pray for healing in their bodies. Amen. Hallelujah. We have a prayer request that came in as well for Mikhail. This is Pastor Ray's grandson. Um, please lift up him up in prayer. I'm not sure what, if it's, I don't know, is it COVID or is it something else? It is COVID. So pre, please continue to pray for the family. Um, they're saying that he's recovering and doing a lot better, but continue to pray. Hallelujah. Any other prayer requests tonight? <clears throat> Any other prayer requests? Hallelujah. Yes, sister. To the Philippines? Okay. Okay. We'll pray. Praise the Lord. When is it supposed to? Uh, to the northern part. Is this in the next couple of days or? Okay. Okay. Praise God. You know, as the scripture says, we can approach God with confidence because this is our time of need. And so if you have prayer requests, anyone who calls the name of the Lord, he will not put you to shame. And so if you have a prayer request, just feel, just spit it out. Amen. 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 Lord's guidance and direction. Praise the Lord. Yes, sister. Okay. This is for your daughter, Erica. Amen. Amen. Her student visa. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Anybody else? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father God, we, we just come to you tonight. Yeah, there's so many needs. And Lord, we just, we lift these to you. We ask God for you to work and move. God, we lift up Chandis. We pray you would give her peace. Lord God, as she goes in for this job interview on Thursday, God, give her peace. And Lord, if it be your will, God, I pray that you would just bless her with this wonderful opportunity, God. God, whatever you want, God, whatever your will is, God, we just, we want to rest in that. God, give her favor, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, use her, God, we pray. Give her confidence and boldness, God, Lord, in this new place of uh, a witness. God, to be a witness, a testimony for you. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift up Mikhail. We continue to pray for Pastor Ray's grandson, Lord, for healing in his body. Lord, healing Lord, in that family, God. Lord, protection, Father, from COVID, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray. Hallelujah. We ask, God, for your divine touch, Lord, on their family. Lord, we lift up, as our sister is saying, this typhoon that is seemingly headed to northern Luzon. And Lord, Lord we just pray, God, you would just send it out to sea. God, cause it to dissipate and be nothing more than just a little bit of rain. God, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, you spoke to the winds and the waves, and you said, peace, be still. And God, we speak in faith right now, peace, be still to these winds and waves that are coming. Peace, be still. Be calm. In the name of Jesus, God. Lord, we pray, God. God, Lord, bring protection, Lord. Surround, Lord, uh, Luzon with your angels, God. Protect this place in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, we just, we surrender this to you, and we ask God, Lord, for you to move and work in this area. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, and Lord, let everyone who sees, God, this miracle, God, how you turn the storm away, 
Let them rejoice and know it's a revelation of, of your power, of your majesty, God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift up Ate Glow's uh, sister-in-law and, and nieces and nephews, God. Lord, who've been sick with COVID, God. And Lord, we, we see they're recovering, and God, we continue to pray right now for healing in their bodies, God. Healing in the name of Jesus, Lord. Healing, God. We thank you, Lord, for the healing, God. Perfect healing, Lord. God, we lift up Sister Ann and so many decisions and so many things that are facing her in the next several, several weeks over the next year. God, I pray, Lord, for your peace. God, your peace. God, your direction. God, that you would give a time of rest, refreshing. Lord, that you would just bless. God, you would just bless her everywhere she goes, Lord. God, that she would just experience the goodness of God. And Lord, you would, you would give her the opportunities to bring souls into the kingdom. God, everywhere she goes, Lord, put people in her path that she could tell the goodness of Jesus. Lord, we pray. God, we pray in the name of Jesus. And God, we lift up just as she said for all of us, God, your divine direction. God, your will be done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Your will be done, God. Give us your vision, God, for what you want us to do, God. Not our vision, not our direction, God, not our will, not our might. But Lord, your, but your spirit. God, your spirit, saith the Lord. God, let it be your spirit that leads us and directs us, God. Let us be sensitive to the, the, the leading of your Holy Spirit, God. To follow what you want us to do, God. Lord, even to be sensitive to even recognize when there's someone nearby that we need to lay hands and pray for God. To be sensitive, to recognize when the right time to give someone the word of truth. Oh, God. Lord God, we, we want to be, Lord, tools of the harvest used by you. God, give us that sensitivity, Lord. Give us your direction. Lord, help us to dream big. Lord, help us to dream big. God, there's no mountain, God, that you can't move. God, there's no, there's no valley that you can't raise, God. Lord, as you call us forward, God, for your work, hallelujah. Lord, we lift up Erica. We pray, God, for Lord favor. God, as she's applying, as the family's applying for the student visa, God, favor in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. God, give favor, Lord. Give favor, Lord. I just pray you just bless Erica. Lord, bless her heart and her mind, God. Lord, as she continues to surrender to you, Lord. Lord, I pray you would you give them the right, the right school, God, the right place, God, for her to go to attend, Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for the Bogus family that you would just bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, we just pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, your peace that passes all understanding, your peace, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Father, Lord, we lift up this ministry to you. Lord, we lift up the many needs, God, that others, God, Lord, may be sending in, God. And we just pray, Lord. God, we pray for answer. God, we know you hear our hearts cry. You hear our prayers. God, we pray for answer in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord. God, have your way. Oh, Holy Spirit, have your way. Lord God, we pray for a breaking, Father, a breaking free, Lord God, for answers to come, Lord God. Lord, we lift up lost loved ones to you, God, and we pray, God, for a breaking, Lord, in their lives, God. Lord, that they would turn to you in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, for, Lord, uh, sisters and brothers, God, for children, God. Lord, for grandchildren, God, for mothers and fathers, aunts and uncles, God, Lord, cousins, God. Lord, a breaking, Father, that they would just begin to call upon you, Lord God. Oh, God. Oh, Lord, we pray, Father. Lord, let your word penetrate deep into their hearts, God. Lord, turn them around in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. God, we lift up our churches to you, Lord. God, we lift up San Antonio and we pray for your spirit of revival to just saturate that church in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you would just bless, Lord, Pastor Lane and, and Miss Beth, God. You would bless them, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless them with souls, Lord God. 
Lord, I pray for, for new opportunities, new homes to open in the community, Lord God, new people to come in, Father, to receive the gospel, Lord God, we pray. Oh, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up, Lord, Tanapak. We lift this church up to you, and we pray, God, for your spirit to move there, Lord God. We pray your blessings on Pastor Fred and Pastor B, Lord God, that you would just pour out revival, God, in that church, God. Lord, you would draw in people from all over Tanapak and all over the north, God, into that church, God. Lord, you would give them a new problem, Lord, God, that they wouldn't have enough space. God, I pray you just bless them, Lord. Bless them, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, cause, their, cause it where they have to do a building program, Lord. God, to continue that they're going to be growing so much. Lord God, we pray it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up Cagman to you. We lift up Pastor Dan and Yummy. We pray, God, Lord, your, your blessings, your spirit upon them, Lord, as they labor, Lord God, in the ministry in Cagman. Lord, I pray you would begin to send in people from all over Cagman. God, we pray for revival for souls to be saved, Lord God, that you would just give them the right property, Lord God, to establish this church, God. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, we pray for favor, Lord. God, we pray for favor in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, you've seen the struggle there, God, and Lord, we pray, God, for a breaking, Lord, for things to break free, God, for freedom to come, Lord God, for, for people to come in from all over, uh, uh, from Capitol Hill and Cagman and San Vicente, Lord God, to fill that church in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, send in your laborers, Lord God. Lord, bless that congregation. Bless them, Lord. God, we lift up Navy Hill to you, and we pray, God, we pray for revival. God, we pray, Lord, for a sensitivity to your spirit among all of us. God, just to a deeper hunger for you, Lord. God, to want more of you, Lord. God, we pray, Father, for a move of your spirit, Lord. God, give me and, and Jerry, Lord, Pastor Lila, Pastor Genesis, God. God, give us your direction, your, what you want us to do. Give us vision, Lord. Lord, I pray for protection upon all of our pastors. Lord, just protect them in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless our missionaries, God. Lord, bless Pastor Nathan and Jennifer. Lord, Zach and, and son. Lord God, bless them, Lord God. Lord, bless them, Lord God. Oh, God, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's a good crowd tonight. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Um, praying for a revival in many of your different churches as you go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, please, please. Okay. There you go. Everyone, come on up here. We're going to get a picture. Ha, ha, ha.